Hello, it is Saturday, September 2nd, 2023. I'm Chris Raymond. Welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve, which I hope is, in fact, <laughs> what you're doing today. I hope you're here for the Daily Solve and not another substitute video. That should have been the case yesterday. I know I released a bonus solve yesterday from, from, the, uh, from the past, from New York Times archives. In fact, I recorded yesterday's video, or I thought I did. I recorded the audio, but none of the video in my, uh, whenever I'm dealing with a remote recording setup, I, I, I always need to remember to do more tests and more checks than I would at home because uh, it's not ex exactly the same setup that I use every single day. And so I, I sat here and I set aside time to record the entire daily New York Times crossword. I did so, and then I couldn't use any of it. So I had to use one of my archives, my I banked recordings from the archive. I, I very much hope that's not what's going on today. I'm sorry about missing another day yesterday. I hope you enjoyed the replacement video. In any case, uh, today we're going to be solving a Saturday crossword. I'm going to be solving it whether or not you see it. I do hope you see it. Um, in any case, this hopefully existent edition of The Daily Solve has been brought to us by Alan Blunder, Mitchell Turek, Camtron, and, as always, the indomitable Showmaster and the incredible Horan family. So thank you so much to the five of them, benefactors of The Daily Solve Patreon campaign, for their generous support. They are sustaining this channel and bringing us this series. I'm very grateful to them for that, as I am uh, grateful to all of the... Uh, patrons of the Daily Solve Patreon campaign. If you'd like to support the channel in that way, you can head over to patreon.com slash daily solve or click the link in the description field underneath the video. And there you can find the bonus videos available to patrons as well as the official Let's Check the Crosses mug for benefactors. Um, you can also join the Daily Solve Discord chat server. That's a nice friendly chat community and there's a link in the description field to that. And finally, please do subscribe to the channel on YouTube. That's a big help. Thanks to everybody who's done so. All right, so now let's get on to today's crossword. A Saturday puzzle could well be the most difficult crossword of the week. It is a construction by Rebecca Goldstein, who's constructed um, around 10 crosswords for the New York Times. And it was, of course, edited, as always, by Will Shorts. So let's start solving, see what's in store for us today. A no-brainer uh, question mark. I was going to say something like, you know, easy win or something that wouldn't have fit anyway, but there, there is a question mark. So something punny is going on there. Let's look at the crosses. Irradiates. P um, in a slangy way, people use phrases like nukes or zap to mean, or zaps to mean irradiates, um, you know, um, uh, infused with radiation or what have you. Platte Valley people. My guess here would be, I don't remember. I don't remember exactly where the Platte Valley is. I'm sorry. I, I should I say I don't remember. I either don't remember or don't know. But my guess here would be the Utes or the Oto or something, so, uh, a group like that. They might go to extremes. I'm not sure yet. What's that? Uh, one means of getting of gaining access. A login maybe. Much of Tonga. Tonga is an island nation. I I presume it's made up of. Um, I presume it's made up of, of numerous islands, as many as many such such nations are. So it could be, you know, islets, multiple islets. Here we have Bastille de uh, Bastille de Saison. So uh, this is referring to the. Um, holiday celebrating the storming of the Bastille in French, in, in France, and in, in, uh, in Paris, and so that would be summer. Etay. Finally, I can put something in the grid. Uh, what do we have here? Words that might be followed by here, here. Um, well, here, here generally follows. You know, somebody's toasting someone. Someone's making a toast. Um, Oh, that's sort of the other way around, though, isn't it? Oh, no, it's not. It isn't the other way around. Sorry, this, that is what I was thinking, because someone would give a toast and then people would say, here, here. Yes, okay. Uh, I thought I was misreading the clue, but I think I wasn't. Toy that's not really a toy. I'm not getting very far in this puzzle, am I? Well, already it's one with an S. There's no question about that. It has triangular blades. Triangular blades. A saw of some sort? Valley peoples. Peoples. Oh, no, it doesn't say people. Sorry, it says people. I was thinking maybe that was plural as well, but it isn't. Okay. 
Well, it, it is, but it's probably plural in the sense of being a single group containing you know, a multitude of people. Okay, anyway, seabird that can be tufted or horned. I think, <laughs> I think this is actually the puffin, the tufted puffin, which is an amazingly sort of assonant phrase, or the horned puffin. I think that's the case. Let's look at the crosses and see if we can confirm or deny. Eponymous German bacteriologist. I'm sure I know this. Um, I'm sure I'll recognize it anyway, but I can't, I'm, I'm not immediately sure. Mantelpiece, an urn, you often see urns on mantles and sort of, I don't know, filmic depictions of stately homes and things. Cinematic specification. Cinematic specification, I'm not sure. Phony, fake. Agnes in Argentina, Inez, I think is, is basically equivalent to that name. Uh, quick greetings. Nods. A nod could be a quick greeting to somebody you see on the street. Um, maybe, sorry, one second. I just need to attend to my to my phone. Okay. Uh, pepper with a delayed fuse. A serrano? Is that because a serrano pepper is thought to have a sort of it, it sort of gives us a heat that is not immediate. It could be. Um, I've certainly eaten plenty of serrano peppers in my life. I didn't, didn't remember that specifically the case, uh, to be the case, but I'm sure it's true. Cinematic specification. Um, framing? Frame size? I'm not sure what I'm looking for there. Lost at strip poker. <laughs> if one lost at strip poker, I suppose one was naked because you've you've removed an article of, of clothing. Uh, I guess each what each hand you've been losing. I suppose. Hot. Oh, hot mess. Oh, in, in S, Sorry, with an S, not a Z. Okay, there we go. So hot mess. Okay. So cinematic specification. It is frame something. Frame. Frame time is in. Uh, you know, twenty four frames per second or something. Something indicating the length of time each frame must be displayed. It could be, oh no, frame, frame rate, sorry. One, that's the actual way that one would refer to that strange little blip in my mind there. Uh, I wonder if this is actually Petri. And then Lost at Strip Poker got naked because Petri certainly is a bacteriologist. I actually, I thought I was going to know this for sure I don't know actually that I did know that Petri was German, but certainly a bacteriologist. Okay. So what about this? Gets, gets dirty. Soils. If you make something dirty, you soil it. Uh, susceptible to burning in a way is arid, dry. Maybe is it? Surely this is this has to be Petri. Um. Susceptible to burning in a way. Not sure. What about this? Not needing to work. Something life fuss over, fret over. No, it doesn't. It doesn't look very good here, does it? Surely this is frame rate. Yeah. Good name for a gallery owner, Artie. Uh, so, Artie could be you know a man's name and. Uh, it sounds like someone who loves art, perhaps. So they could well own an art gallery. A fuss over, oh, fawn over, right. So a different sort of fuss. Not, fu not fuss as in fretting nervously, but maybe fussing as in fawning over a, I don't know, a grandchild or something, I suppose, maybe. Flies like flies. So does it mean sort of flits around? To fly in the manner of a fly, the insect. I'm not. I'm not actually sure what we're what we're looking for there. Shocked reaction. That something. That's something. Maybe. Uh, don't know. It doesn't look right there, does it? Swarms. Flies could swarm, I suppose. Shocked reaction. Triple take. If you do a double take, you sort of look at something and then and then you have a follow up reaction and a triple take. I suppose it happens. You know, once more. Just the check. I'm 
I'm what? I'm full. I'm done. I'm I'm off. Just check. I'm off. Be sort of. I, I don't know that that's a great match. I don't think that's right. Perfume part. An ester. They do love esters. And I mean, I would say this. If I had to choose an, an official perfume component of the New York Times crossword, I'd probably identify it as the ester. But I, I don't. I don't know that it's common enough for me to get give it that distinction. We'll, we'll keep an eye on it. It has a triangular blade. Oh, an epée, a, um, a fencing sword. All right. Yeah, they do, actually, strangely. I mean, this isn't the kind of thing I would have remembered, but now that I, I see it stated, I can I can imagine the, the little uh, triangular sort of cross-section of an epée. Just the check. I'm set, I suppose. That must be. This is a letter, then? Abbreviation on a paper tray. Right, okay. Must be, must be that, a letter. Statement from someone you should probably respond to with skepticism. Something about a dentist? I'm, I'm not a dentist. I don't know. A uh, quake, a, a, a seism, as in uh, sa same root as seismology or seismic activity. We're dealing with earthquakes. Uh, most common evening for Dateline NBC during its three-decade run. I don't know, but uh, it must be Friday, surely. There aren't, aren't any other possibilities. No. <laughs> don't think there are any other days of the week that could be abbreviated in three letters ending with an I. So I think that'll be it. Smooths as silk. Irons? You iron some silk clothing, perhaps? Oh, I'm... Sci statement from someone you should probably respond to. Oh, I'm I'm no scientist or I'm not a scientist. There we go. Okay. So say I'm not a scientist, but here's my scientific belief. Maybe uh, maybe respond to that with skepticism. Um, okay. So, top selling concession item at San Francisco's Oracle Park. No, oh, I don't know. That's interesting. Wonder what that would be top selling concession item at San Francisco's Oracle Park. Is this going to be very, should, <laughs> as someone who lived in San Francisco for a long time, should this be very, very obvious to me? Probably should be. Garlic, fr oh, garlic fries. Okay. That's not unsurprising to me. It's not necessarily something I instantly associate with, with San Francisco for any particular reason, but, uh, I would, I would gladly order garlic fries and enjoy them. I'm sure. So, um, sounds plausible. Susceptible to burning in a way, right? So, what is this? Oh, fair. If you're fair skinned, you could be susceptible to sunburn. Gets in a lather. Uh, so this could be um, dealing with you know soap or something that you literally get in a lather, or you know a person. Um, who you, who, whom you upset or, or uh, I don't know, maybe you're arguing with them or something. Gets in a lather. But I'm not, I don't quite immediately see what it is. Oversharing alert. TMI. Too much information. Oh, foams. Okay, there we go. So it, it is actually dealing with soap and suds. Herd is to buffalo as Bob. So a herd of buffalo, a Bob of... Um, foals? I don't know. What is What animal is this? A bob of seals, maybe. A bo I don't know. That's somehow... I, actually, this isn't something I knew, but that somehow... A bob of seals somehow sounds reasonable to me. Some Greek cheeses are fetas, feta cheese. And, oh, oh, not needing to work is set for life, I see. So you, you, you're wealthy enough that you're set for life. You don't need to work. Much of Tonga could be islets. That was my early speculation there. What about this? One mean of one means of gaining access. An ID tag or a it obviously doesn't fit. I'm just trying to think of anything. Um a password maybe a no brainer. And we're maybe this is simply a toast. Words that might be followed by right because you could actually literally say a toast and then people say, oh here, here, here. Uh maybe that is the case. So what about this? Irradiates. Zaps? I think that was one of my guesses as well. Oh, zombies. It's a no-brainer. Someone literally with no brain, I suppose. I guess that's part of the... I guess that's part of the um, sort of mythology of zombies. Maybe they, maybe there's still physical brain matter in there, but they effectively don't have a kind of functioning consciousness, basically. 
Um, I think that's I think that's basically what's being communicated. I don't know enough about exactly what the implication of a zombie's mental state is, but I think this is essentially what it is. So the the Plot Valley people then must be the Oto. They might go to extremes. Mm, I'm not sure. One means of gaining accent, access is... Oh, a badge. It is sort of like an ID tag, with which I said. So there we go. But I didn't think of badge. But here we have it. Toy that's not really a toy. A poodle, a dog, a toy breed. You know, small, one of those very, very small breeds of dog. But it's not really a toy. You don't, you don't uh, treat it like an inanimate object. It has triangular blades... A sedge? That's, oh, that's funny, because we also had uh, the epe with the a triangular blade, but here we have something with plural triangular blade. So a sedge, that's some, some, something to do with agriculture. So, or is it, or sedge, or is it, no, this is the plant itself, right, with sort of triangular blades in the sense of blades of, of grass, that meaning of blade. I think, that's, I think that's actually the case here. So they might go to extremes. Mood swings, there we go. And then half a laugh could be haw, as, as, as used in hee-haw, that kind of thing, a sort of braying donkey sort of laugh. The world's first black-led republic is Haiti. There we go. For, for a fairly brief time, I think, at that, at that point of the first black-led republic. Um, unless I'm misremembering my Haitian history, but I, I believe that's the case. Uh, call from a server, maybe. Call from a server, maybe. I'm not sure. I'm not seeing that. Sorry, I'm not. I'm. I'm wondering if it's a a, a waiter at a restaurant or what else would it be? I'm not sure. Replying to emails, scheduling meetings, etc. Informally, admin. Um, I certainly hear that a lot more in the UK than I than I ever did in the US. Um, as a phrase, I'm doing some admin. Uh, in terms of individual people saying it about themselves, I mean, as opposed to referring to kind of, I don't know, someone whose job that is in an office. Call from a server, maybe. Uh, call from a server, maybe. Oh, add in. It's a tennis serve. Right. Okay. That's that's the um, you know sort of advantage in that. That's the that's when you're essentially tied at forty all in tennis and then you've got the add in or add out and the server calls that to indicate the kind of state of play. Okay, I do it again. No regrets. There we go. Fertile crescent feeder. Uh, the um, tigris is in tigris and euphrates. And then uh, river, rivers. And then nickname that can be a diminutive of a family member. Tito for uncle. Soups, is that what we're looking for here? Like Staten Island on a New York City subway map. Oh, inset. Yes, yeah, Staten Island is often included as an inset on a New York City subway map um, so that they don't need to deal with the sort of proper uh, scale of, of the distance of um, uh, Staten Island. Okay. Oxford English Dictionary's Word of the Year in 2022, <laughs> describing an unapologetic, unapologetically self indulgent state. I remember this because I think I. I guess this just speaks to my, you know, I'm just sort of out of touch in certain ways. I don't, I don't think I was aware of this word until the Oxford English Dictionary chose it as the word of the year in 2022, at which point I did learn of its existence, which is goblin mode, which I think is, I think essentially refers to being, uh, sort of having, you know, a day when you just sort of are, are, you know, you're on the couch, you're not even dressed, maybe, or you're, you're not worrying, you're, you're Maybe you're, I don't know. Maybe it's the weekend, or you're taking the day off work, and you're, you're just you're, you're you're in goblin mode. Campus noob, frosh, uh, used to refer to freshman, a first year student. Alternative to a tulip glass. Oh, a flute as in a champagne flute, as used in as referenced in was it yesterday? I think yesterday's New York Times connections game, which I which I did solve. I did manage to get my my sort of little little word game, New York Times word games recorded yesterday without losing their video. Uh, unlike the crossword, holiday cheer, ho, 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 maybe? A kind of uh, Santa Claus-like cheer. Acquisition and Monopoly, you could buy a, 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 oops, a hotel in the board game Monopoly. 
And the giving sort could be a donor, someone who donates, who literally gives. Legacy competitor. Um, is legacy a, a brand or something here? I'm not sure. But what about this? Shorthand for unnamed co-authors at all. So you'd, you'd list, you know, you list the first authors and then you say at all to indicate the rest. Macaulay's Blank of Ancient Rome. I'm not sure. What about this? Legacy competitor. Sonata? Is that... Are these cars? Is it Hyundai? Hyundai Sonata. And then what's legacy? Is that also a Hyundai? Or is there... Or is that referring to a competitor from a different... Presumably, it would be from a different make if they're competitors, but I don't... Honda? Toyota? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Anyway, I think that's the answer. Grand total could be the sum. Sure, I guess. Uh, okay, you could say. And foraged delica delicacies. So uh, morel mushrooms, so morels, and then uh, Macaulay's Lays of Ancient Rome. Okay, that, that isn't uh, a, a book, presumably, with which I'm familiar. Snack crackers since 1921. Oreo something? <laughs> Could it be? I don't know. Uh, thinks of with buyer's remorse. Say, ruse. You rue a particular purchase. You regret it. They may be held during the national anthem. Hold uh, brims of one. One takes off one's hat and holds it by the brim? Uh, probably not. Uh, I'm not sure. Yeah, sorry, I'm not sure. Get high. Soar it through the sky. There we go. So get high in a lit in a quite literal sense. You're actually literally going up into the air. One crossing the line. Uh, Reds State, Ohio. That's a sports team. Cincinnati Reds, Cincinnati, Ohio. Yeah, that, I'm pretty sure that's right. Uh, I hope I hope I don't rue those words. Speaking of ruse, bubbly chocolate bar brand. Bubbly chocolate bar brand. I'm not sure what that is about. That's interesting. So here we have our snack crackers again. Oh, uh, no, I was going to say Cheetos. That doesn't fit. Cheese it Cheese its There we go. That's it. Those sound plausibly like they would have been around since 1921, more so than Cheetos to me. But I don't know. Who knows? Uh, one crossing the line. A scab. Right. Okay. So a worker crossing the line at uh, crossing a picket line um, at a strike. There we go. So publicity of a sort could be airtime. You have airtime on the radio or the television to get, you know, publicity, essentially, if you're, if you're, I don't know, advertising something or what have you. Bubbly chocolate bar. Oh, arrow. Yes. That is a sort of aerated, I see what they mean by bubbly chocolate, chocolate bar brand. It's sort of aerated chocolate. So it's, it's filled with little pockets of air. And then if one gives a leg up, one boosts somebody maybe. And an unwanted spot informally is a zit. So a little bit of acne and then Oh, this was Brims. Oh, that's so funny. I, it felt, I felt like I was reaching too far to get that, but in fact, that was the answer. And there we go. Uh, oops, I must have turned off my audio on my computer, so I didn't hear the little jingle. Anyway, that was the Saturday crossword. A, a nice, I think, you know, fairly tricky Saturday crossword. So not the absolute most difficult Saturday we've ever solved, but it was no pushover. I mean, it was it was more difficult than yesterday's crossword, I would say. Not that you'd, not that you'd know based on my having uh, solved it, but, but there we have it. Uh, I'm not a scientist. Garlic fries. This is a funny fact. I'm glad to, I'm, I'm glad to know this completely arbitrary fact about my, about my, uh, my one time home. And uh, let's see. No brainer. Zombie was was very clever. Uh, I was pleased to see the tufted or horned puffin in there. Um, yeah, just some nice some nice clues and some nice cluing throughout the puzzle. It was a good, themeless Saturday crossword. I hope you enjoyed it. And that is that for today's puzzle. I should be back tomorrow for the Sunday puzzle. I'm not sure. I, I'm not actually certain yet. But I will try to record tomorrow's puzzle. So I um, hope you join me either way because if, even if I don't record it, there will be uh, there will be something up on the channel for you to enjoy. So look forward to that either way. Hope you join me for whatever it is. And until then, please have an excellent remainder of your Saturday. Take care.